So uh, as I mentioned in my introduction, I have been working on a review of resilience frameworks. And actually, this is part of a bigger sort of set of papers that the Overseas Development Institute has been working on, uh, funded by Rockefeller, as I mentioned. And these are a couple of them, but I would suggest that you, if you're interested, go to the ODI website and just do a search for resilience. And then a whole series of papers that come up under the resilience scan uh, title will appear. And um, the last one is the one that I did with uh, a woman named Lara. And uh, just quickly to give you kind of an overview of the findings that we came up with, I should say uh, there are many, many, many resilience frameworks, especially that have been developed in the last three years. Uh, we only examined 17 of those, which is a tiny amount, but that's partly because we needed to have access to the indicators that we used and, and also because in many ways to extract that information from some of them is just too complicated. And so we had to simplify the work a little bit. Uh, essentially what we did was we identified three criteria uh, to sort of lump these different um, kind of themes into. Uh, there are many different ways of looking at resilience. If you, if you look at uh, Stockholm Resilience Center has fantastic publications with, I don't know how many uh, characteristics of resilience. Rockefeller has their own set. Uh, we, in, in the end, only use these three that we thought were appropriate. So learning, options, and flexibility, sort of the three, <coughs> the three broad categories for what resilience is, is about. Um, and obviously, as we've mentioned here many times, the frameworks were influenced by their conceptual entry points. And so if you're looking at climate change in particular, then obviously that is going to frame how you look at resilience in the frameworks and what, what you're interested in. Um, and I think that limited also the, the ability to make a comparison across them. And obviously that also <laughs> justifies the development of further frameworks because as we say, they're all unique. And that's not actually a problem. But I think the, one of the, the, the things we wanted to look at was whether the resilience, the indicators, I guess you might want to use the word metrics, were actually just indicators of well-being rather than of resilience. Um, and I think what we found is that there is this gap between the theory on resilience and the way in which the indicators actually do only focus, I mean, primarily focus on well-being um, and general development factors. And so, of course, a lot of these frameworks I should mention have a developing a country context. Um, and then as a consequence, the indicators don't always provide a complete picture of resilience, no big surprise. But one thing I wanted to mention is that uh, we, as we sent this paper out for peer review, one of the, the comments was that sustainable uh, livelihood framework, which is something I'm sure if you don't work on development, you probably are not familiar with the sustainable livelihoods framework. But it's essentially a way of looking at development through sustainable livelihoods approach. Um, is also a, a resilience framework. And so that kind of, again, brings together sustainability and, and resilience. So I won't go on about that, but I just want to show you quickly this resilience navigator. And so this is the website. And here you can see the resilience navigator is essentially a database of all, as many resilience frameworks as uh, uh, my colleagues have been able to collect so far. And I think at, at some point he was updating it on a weekly basis. So it, I think it's still in beta. Uh, but still, you can go in, and I can't show you, oh, I could show you live, but essentially when you go in, you have a whole bunch of filters, and then you can select what you're interested in, or you can just look at all of the frameworks, uh, whether you want indicators, whether you don't want indicators, and so on. So that, and then finally, I just want to make one plug for this. Uh, the, I co-edited this uh, World Disasters Report, which is the flagship report of the International Red Cross. And it was a focus on culture and risk. So if you're interested in any of these issues, I do have one copy left that I'm going to leave here. And um, you can also go in and download each chapter. So. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.